Hey, Redcon Raider here, with special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible, including but not limited to Dragon Matrix 7, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Aloise, Dracith, Eerie V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatly, James Tremier, Kazorm, Nathan Welch Jr., Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrug. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. As this happened before I could actually do our bookkeeping. The resonant voice of the majestic angel rings out through the hushed streets of Dresden. You hear its words from afar. They concealed it right under our noses. And without Xanthir's notes, that incarnation of corruption, even I would not have been able to locate the barrier. Surely the Herald of the Inheritor can rid us of this scourge? Irabeth stumbles over her words slightly. It is impossible, righteous one. I cannot do it alone. But wait! I hear the steps of one who can bring hope. I am the Hand of the Inheritor, Herald of Iomede, the Lightbringer. And I greet you, Champion of Galerion. The angel in gleaming gold armor drops to one knee. Wow, gotta say, uh, not a lot of folks have the common decency to try to drop down to eye level when they see me coming. Though I guess this is more like knee level, but it's the thought that counts. You mind maybe staying like this for a while? I'd, I'd kind of like to soak it in. I assume you're joking. Although I am quite happy to offer up homage to such a deserving hero. The angel falls silent and patiently remains on one knee for a full minute before rising to his feet. I like this guy. He knows how to make a good first impression. Please also allow me to thank you for saving Targona the Silver-Haired. We thought we would never see our sister alive again. Uh, yeah, don't mention it. So, what's up? What, what brings you out here? Your deeds and exploits, champion. You have brought hope to these accursed lands. Hope that the demon invasion will finally be stopped once and for all. And I am here to aid my goddess's chosen one. Oh, uh, cool. And, and what were you two talking about? This. The angel gestures towards a symbol on the paving stones. The ivory sanctum held a dark secret. Directly beneath Dresden in the bowels of the earth, there lies one more bastion of the demons. The Midnight Fane. It is the repository of a mighty rift through which the spawns of the abyss travel to Galerion. The entrance to this place is right in front of us blocked by a barrier that is accessible only to demons. So, this is where Minago fled, and where all the demons in the city have been coming from. They can pass through the barrier freely, but we can't. And it doesn't just stop us, it injures us too. It is much worse than that. The barrier is imbued with enormous power. An attempt to break through will trigger a magical explosion. I could protect you and the city from it, but even my powers will be insufficient to hold back the chaos and open the way. This is what disturbs me most. We cannot allow the demons to rebuild their armies and plot their next attack right below the sacred heart of the crusade. Actually, I, uh, I figured out how to crack these things open last week. I uh, picked up the key while I was rummaging around in Aurelu's old lab. So yeah, we can uh, we can do this thing whenever you want. I am impressed by your many gifts, champion. Together we shall open the passage and protect the city. And then we shall burn the Midnight Fane with the cleansing fire of righteousness. Yeah, yep, yeah, sounds like a plan. But first we must gather our strength. I shall send word to Queen Galfrey. Her help may be necessary when we reach that dark bastion of the abyss. 
The Queen will heed my call and arrive quickly, within a month. You must use this time to prepare to attack the Fane. Um, okay, I, I guess we could wait a month. Does that mean you have time to answer a few questions? Ask your questions, champion. I will be glad to answer. Okay, well, uh, first things first, more, more of a statement than a question. I didn't do that to the Sword of Valor. It, it just kind of happened. Just want to get that out there, you know. Um, not my fault, just kind of happened. Uh, bye, Erebeth. Nice seeing you, I guess. The Herald raises a hand. Do not fret, champion. The great relic given to the world by my lady Iomade will continue to serve you, just as it has served all people before now. The Sword of Valor has not lost its protective properties. It has merely changed its design. Some might call it blasphemous, but not I. For the power that changed the banner's design was given to you by Iomade herself. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really trying to argue or question your logic here, but are you a million percent sure about that? Because there are a lot of other insinuations that my, my magic chest wound might, might actually be from someone else. That means this mysterious wound is a mark of valor given to you by my mistress, setting you apart from all the rest, champion. And you're crazy sure about that, like she told you herself? Uh, no, I could be mistaken and unable to perceive the full truth. The inheritor's thoughts are hidden from me, for I am but her hand. I do not test her will with my doubts, nor crave answers to my questions. I simply trust and serve. But I know that if your body had been harmed by malevolent fiends, my goddess would have extended her mercy to you and healed you. Okay, sure, yeah, um, follow-up question. Why would her blessing take the form of a gaping, bleeding chest wound? I feel like there were better options. Because this world of yours, champion, is bleeding. And my lady's chosen one carries a crimson mark as a sign of the great suffering borne by mortal kind. The scarlet drops on your breast, they are the blood of all the martyrs and all the innocents. That is how I see it. Cool. Can you maybe heal it so I can keep all that martyr blood in, inside of me instead of just like on everything else I touch? Ruined a perfectly good tunic. Defy my lady's will? It pains me, but I must refuse you, champion. If you are suffering from this affliction, it must be part of the inheritor's design. The pain serves to remind you of the path you must take. All right, uh, I, I hear you. Do not allow doubt and fear to enter your heart. My lady will not abandon us. Just saying, I'd have an easier time keeping things out of my heart if there wasn't a hole in my sternum, but... Uh, why don't you tell me about yourself? Ask away, champion. Cool. Uh, wh what's it like being a hand? It is a great honor and an even greater responsibility. The Herald is not always the strongest among a deity's servants, but the Herald is always one who embodies the key principles of their faith. This means that I am bound to uphold the highest ideals of Iomade, righteous valor, justice, and honor. This is a tall order even for an angel, but I cannot falter in my duty even slightly. Therein lies my service to the goddess, and the thousands of her faithful followers. Right, but, like, what, what, what do you actually do? I serve as the hand and voice of the goddess, carrying out her will and delivering her message. When her radiance has no tasks for me, I am occupied by the same duties as other warriors of heaven. I keep unfailing watch over the goddess's domain. I escort the souls of the faithful to Phrasma's court, and then on to their waiting afterlife. I also watch over the goddesses chosen, and when the opportunity arises, I descend into hell to engage in honest combat with the devils. 
It allows me to study their tactics. Well, uh, okay, yeah, that's that's genuinely impressive. So what? So tell me, what's uh, Iomide like? The Herald chuckled softly. No doubt you are hoping to hear a tale of her untold divine might and the awe that she elicits in those around her. Yes, this is true of the Inheritor, but it is also true that she seemed much closer and understandable to you than to others, such as myself, for example. Iomide was born an ordinary person in the cursed lands of Cheliax, and traveled a long road before she became the righteous queen of heaven. But she has never forgotten who she was before. I am older than my lady goddess, much older, and still I bow down before her foresight and wisdom. We immortals, who spend much of our time in the outer plains, can sometimes struggle to comprehend the pain, fear, and joy that mortals feel. But not Iomide. She is as human as she is divine. Neat. So, uh, hey, uh, why'd you guys take so long to tag in? You know, we really could have used your help a bit earlier. A lot of people died. You cannot imagine how your question fills me with sorrow. My greatest desire since the day the world wound opened was to come here at the head of a light-bringing army and drive out the legions of darkness, to harry them until they were cowering in the farthest corners of the abyss. But alas, we, the first servants of the gods, are greatly restricted in what we can do. The Crusades are the mortals' battle for their own world. If I bring angelic forces here, it will become a war between heaven and the abyss. Waves of power, magic incinerating everything within sight. Armies of celestials and demons fighting in every corner of this world. The consequences would be horrific. Remember, everything you have seen up to now has been the work of only two demon lords. Discari and Baphomet. Also, Nocticula and maybe a Reshkigal, and uh, I think there's a little Lamashtu in there. Oh, uh, and Socks. But in the Abyss, there are dozens of creatures with similar power. They are disunited and despise one another almost as much as they despise all that is light and righteous. But be sure that they will not miss a chance to sink their teeth into Heaven's throat. If all the Demon Lords marched into Galerion, it would be the stuff of nightmares and it cannot be allowed to become a reality. Oh. Then why are you here now? There's permissible interference, and then there's crossing the line. I was permitted to create the Wardstone and gift them to the Crusaders, to offer my advice and from time to time even appear on the battlefield myself, to accompany several allies. This does not stray beyond the bounds of the Mortals' War. I could have been summoned with equal success by a faithful cleric. Right, right. Got him on a technicality, I guess. Let's hope the cultists never figure out how to summon demon lords. But the appearance here of Heaven's multitudinous host in full force is another matter entirely. Alas, for now I can only offer you this. My presence and a small troop of my loyal soldiers. You know what? I'll take it. I'll, I'll take whatever you can have to offer. Thanks. Hand. I am here to illuminate you, champion. Uh-huh. Mind if I ask about angels? You have my full attention. Okay, um, where do you guys come from? Like other supernatural beings, we most often, though not always are born from the souls of mortals. You must be aware of the grand laws governing the cycle of birth and death. Maybe. After Phrasma's court, each mortal soul receives their merited afterlife. Hell in the abyss, heaven and Elysium. Each soul goes to the plane that called to them in life. But when they arrive at their destination, a different fate awaits each soul. Where evil reigns supreme, souls typically become commodities or prey and a scant few are reborn as wicked fiends. In the plains of good, souls are destined for peaceful rest or great deeds in a new guise. Such is the lot of angels, 
We are born from the souls of noble mortals. One soul or several, it can vary. Sometimes the gods can also create angels out of the essence of their plane. But this essence also contains fragments of good souls. Wait, so angels are basically just recycled mortals? Am I getting that right? <laughs> that is a question for sages and philosophers to debate. I am just a simple warrior. The hand of the inheritor's voice sounds cheerful, but becomes increasingly solemn as he continues. Although many supernatural beings are born from the souls of mortals, we are not mortals. We are cut from the cloth of the plane from which we originate. We are an idea made flesh. Many things mortals care deeply about mean nothing to us, such as time, for instance, or gender. Only a few of my kind see themselves as male or female. For the majority of angels, these words are meaningless. We can communicate with any creature without learning their language, and we do not freeze in even the most terrible frost. We are different, but we will never look down on mortals because of that, and we will never, ever stop praying for you. Or protecting you. Well, you're not immortal either, right? I mean, I've seen angels die. Killed a few myself, but I probably shouldn't mention that. Uh, there was this one down in the tunnels below Canabras. He, he gave me his flaming sword. The hand of the inheritor hangs his head. I can guess who it was. Lariel, my long-lost comrade and friend. He disappeared without a trace back in those dark days when the world wound opened its jaws for a second time and swallowed up new lands. I mourn him as bitterly today as I did back then. But I also rejoice that he is able to call to us, to you, across the expanse of time, which has no meaning for us. We lose old allies and gain new ones, and we will not surrender, no matter how great the loss is, no matter how deadly the enemy. Sure, sure. Hey, uh, speaking of Larry, uh, how's his sister, Targona? She wasn't really looking too hot last time I saw her. Targona, my brave sister in arms, has returned to the halls of heaven now. Her imprisonment was a heavy burden for her. The corrupted wing that the witch Arilu rewarded her with is poisoning Targona's days with fear and worry. But she is being cared for by the finest healers in heaven. I have faith and hope that we will be able to help her. Hey, well, good for her. Glad to hear she's uh, doing okay for herself. Not, not like, say, those angels that are all trapped in the ward stones. What, what's up with that? The Herald of Iomede gives a sigh beneath his helmet. It was a heavy decision for all of us. My mistress sent out a call to take a stand against the demons and many angels of heaven answered it. We chose the noblest and bravest from among those who volunteered to sacrifice their freedom for the sake of Galerion, and we locked their souls inside the ward stones. They were fated to stand guard there, inside the cold depths of stone, pitting their unbending will against creeping demonic corruption. But, alas, the goddess and I failed to account for the weakness that lurks even in the best of us. Time has not been kind to my brothers and sisters, even though it has no meaning to us. Despair has taken root in their souls, forcing them to act against their goddess and their calling. Thank you for finding a way to preserve the Wardstone, despite the fact that many of my brothers and sisters inside abandoned their vigil. I do not condemn them. I do not know if I could have withstood the demonic corruption if I had been in their place. The Herald shakes his head despondently. Sure. Hey, uh, before I let you go, do you, do you have any idea how my powers work? Things just really kind of happen. I made a guy king, I... I turned a bunch of jello into birds. Got this one gal hooked on pot. Uh, it, it was weirder than it sounds. I'm afraid not. Even if I am not privy to all the workings of my radiant mistress, I believe that she has chosen you, and 
I know that she watches over her chosen most attentively. She does not lead mortals by the hand, but allows them to prove themselves, to prove that they are worthy of her divine mercy. I am amazed by the form the divine gift has taken within you, but I am often surprised by mortals. What matters most is that you are leading the Crusaders to victory and ridding Galerion of the world wound, once and for all. Yeah, fair enough. While Iomide was still mortal, she underwent the test of the Star Stone and gained her godhood. It may well be that you are experiencing a similar trial, at the end of which you will gain true righteousness and power. So what I'm hearing here is that I might also become a god? That's a good thing to leave off on. Thank you. No, no further notes. That said, as much as I'd like to imagine that scenario, I figure this is more of a a consumed by their own absolute power sort of deal. It's just such an established literary trope. You don't give someone ultimate power unless there's some huge, incontrovertible downside to it. Anyway, uh, that's it for the hand, for now. And we're now on the clock. We have one month before Galfrey shows up, which will usher us into the final stage of Act 3. That gives us a few scant weeks to wrap up the rest of our loose ends and make our final preparations. Let's hit the pause button for now. I'm going to go take care of our off-screen bookkeeping. This guy interrupted me before I could do that. And I'll uh, also start assembling a list of all the things we still have to do. We'll be right back. And we're back. About an hour later and 200,000 gold richer, which we are going to need in the very near future, but we'll worry about that a bit later down the line. You'll notice that we are, of course, back out in the world map. That's because we're setting our sights on the Temple of the Good Hunt to tie up the first of many loose ends before Galfrey's inevitable arrival. But we've got a few other things we're also taking care of out here, such as this fortress, which apparently we can get to in Act 3. Though we're not going to just yet. We have reinforcements incoming. So I'd like to tag them in before we have Agaboya start clearing out that last region. And yeah, we do still have Aru waiting for us back in Dresden, but I figured she can keep. We'll catch up with her next time around. I just wanted to close this episode out with a hefty dose of gratuitous violence. This will also give me a chance to rearrange our hot bars between episodes. Can't do that back in town. All right, so first things first. Let's take care of that fatigue. And we'll toss up some quick buffs. I think that's good enough. And one last thing. Fights have been getting a bit too trivial lately, so I figure it's about time we officially bump ourselves up to hard. Minus, of course, the, the retrain and the encumbrance thing. That's just quality of life stuff. I'm going to keep that on. What have I done? Oh, a rastal. What should I do? 
The young priest is curled into a ball, and tears are streaming down his cheeks. What's that? How could I... It's my fault. Sinedra, what is she going to do to me? Hey, Kato, you, uh, you doing okay over there? Sinedra showed up here, and she had those creatures with her. There was a peasant lad, and they dragged him into the crypt. He screamed and screamed. It was terrible. And then it stopped. They killed him. Sinedra said that her sanctum had fallen, and the servants of Baphomet would soon be going to the west. She said she was going to take me with her, but I don't want to go. You'll be eaten by rats, you say. And that's a bad thing? As a faithful follower of the god of hunting and animals, surely you should be pleased that you will become prey for such noble predators? Thanks, Darren. You must have been living in fear of this day for a very long time. Soon you won't have to be afraid anymore. Isn't that good? It will hurt, but you can bear it. Fear is scarier than pain. You'll feel better without it. Um, you guys realize we're saving him, right? I mean, I, I assume we are. Hang in there, Kato. We're going to go in there and just kill Zenedra real quick, and, and then you'll be fine, right? That should take care of the curse. Kato swallows and gives a jerky nod. His voice is raspy from his sobs, but it's filled with newfound determination. You're right. I can't be afraid anymore. Those filthy, evil, vile creatures need to pay. Let's kill them all! That's the spirit. Uh, but don't... Don't get too far ahead of us, buddy. Zenedra promised to take us to a safe place! Baphomet, protect your servants! Alright, let's see here. I mean, these are just mooks, but they do, they do seem slightly tougher. That, uh, that is a nightmare. Killed them so hard their bones turned to slinkies. That is hard to look at. Oh, let's do a round of beasts gift. And on we go. We've been raided. Crusaders have come for our heads. Prepare yourself. Oh yeah, yeah, they're deaf. Whoa! Hey, look at that. All right, all right. This is looking slightly more challenging. I'm liking this. We're actually seeing some semblance of tactics from these guys. Not, of course, that it will ultimately help them all that much. This particular group is just hopelessly outclassed. Oh wow, that guy actually survived. Not used to them having that many hit points. 
there will be a bit of an adjustment period. I mean, again, not a huge challenge, but they did put up more of a fight. I look forward to seeing how the next Mega Dungeon goes. Or the uh, Treasures of the Midnight Isle. That is still on the docket. You will regret that, Priestling. Your death will be a nightmare of pain. Nah. Death itself is actually pretty painless. It's all the stuff that comes before it that's painful. See? That doesn't hurt, does it? Oh, wow. He actually managed to tag Kaz. That, that is a rarity. So they are definitely better at nickel and diming us now. Okay, let's go have a chat with Zanedra. Zanedra looks at you in alarm and irritation, but she quickly regains her composure. Her tone is threatening. So, you've found my little refuge then, Commander. I can't say I'm happy to see you here. We're in a bit of a hurry, and you, no doubt, plan to wreak the same mayhem you did in the Ivory Sanctum. Why don't you come back another time? No? And what did you do to my little Kyoto? The little milksop forgot my promise, and now he thinks he's a valiant crusader? It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. It is better to kill enemies without any excess emotion, methodically. But I cannot deny that when I dispatch this smirking cultist from this world, I will do so with sincere pleasure. Yep, right there with you, Reg. So I hear, Zenedra, you know we're only like half a day from Dresden, right? The woman smiles deviously. This is the Temple of the Horned God. You can appreciate the irony. Grubby peasants were worshipping a god with a stag's head above, while down in the crypt, I was performing masses for Baphomet, the father of minotaurs. You idiot crusaders never even considered that the enemy could be hiding in your own holy places. This place was my secret lair, the place where I enlightened those who were seeking. But now that you've destroyed our stronghold in the Ivory Sanctum, it's time for the servants of Baphomet to go west, to a less dangerous location. Right, right, and you were terrorizing poor Kyoto so he wouldn't tell anyone. Zanedra scoffs. That cowardly little pup? I came here and ordered him to obey me, and he didn't even put up a fight. I placed a curse on him, one my master taught me. If that little wimp allowed anyone but a true servant of Baphomet into the crypt, 
he would be doomed to an excruciating death. Oh, it was fun watching the torment of the pitiful little coward. You talk like a demon, but you are not one. Don't you realize that in the eyes of your masters, you were a piece of mortal scum, just like the people you torment? Darren's whisper becomes insinuating and chillingly compelling. That won't make her understand. Show her what a real demon looks like. Let her see your true self. Let her tremble, plead, and finally realize what she is for you and your kind. Red sparks slowly start to burn in the succubus's eyes, but then she flinches and looks at the Count with the same horror she might a venomous snake. Your idea of fun is cruel. Why are you making sport of me? If you got your way, don't you know what I could do to my companions? What I could do to you? Yeah, Darren, maybe, uh, maybe lighten up on that a little. Ah, Arushalay, Arushalay. Now the threats have started. Demons are supposed to frighten upstart mortals. Uh, but wait, you're not like that. Gotta say, Darren, you're seeming slightly less charming than usual right now. Anyway, maybe uh, maybe we should focus our ire back on Zenendra, you know, the, the evil cultist we're about to kill. The woman casts a malevolent look at you. We shall see which of us will be forced to run. No, 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 I said kill, not chase away. If you really wanted to run, you shouldn't have backed yourself into a temple. The woman's voice becomes gentle and mockingly tender. Oh, you like that? I am clever. Why don't we lay down our weapons and I can teach you a few other clever tricks? Actually, no. My master will be angry if he finds out. I will have to kill you. That is, unless you are clever enough to get out of here. I'm going to go with no. Just in general to all the things you just said. Ha ha ha! Let's see if you're brave enough to follow me, valiant crusader. Do you have the guts to pursue me into the shrine of Baphomet, the lord of the ivory labyrinth? Yeah, yeah, I just took down the ivory sanctum. You think I'm going to be scared of a basement? And know this, if you step over the threshold of the crypt, Kato's death will be excruciating. A brood of hungry rats will appear inside him, and they will chew him from the inside out. If you choose to fight me, you will also be condemning him to death. Funny story about that, actually. I, I won't. At least I don't... I don't think we will. Right? Hey, you didn't explode. Yeah, this was a rough one to run with my Azada. Nice hit. Make your peace. Who? The red-headed witch is dead. The curse has been broken, right? I can go home? Home. To my lovely quiet village. Yeah, get well the getting's good. Smart kid, that Kyoto. Hope things work out for him. Also, that uh, that was a much less depressing ending for this quest than I got with my Azada. Or my Aeon, for that matter. Man, so Zenedra really had nothing of note, aside from maybe this letter. Let's have a peek at this thing.
The letter was written in haste and left unfinished. Glory to Lord Baphomet! Lady Hepsimira, you should know that the Ivory Sanctum has been raided. The Crusader forces are no doubt continuing their offensive. In light of their victory, it has become dangerous to maintain an underground sect in this region. I trust that Lord Baphomet would value a living Zenedra more highly than a dead one. Therefore, I hope that he will not punish us for our forced retreat. The commander of the Crusaders is too dangerous for us to sit here under his nose. I have summoned all loyal members of the sect. When all is ready, we will set out west via secret routes. I'm relying on you to... You know, I gotta say, with a, with a letter like this, I feel like even if we hadn't killed her, she would have ended up dead anyway. <laughs> Sinedra was not a very smart person. But I guess that's just part and parcel with being a career cultist. Well, so I guess that's it. And Kyoto wasted no time in booking it. That's kind of a shame. I mean, I'm happy for the kid, but... At the same time, I thought we'd get a bit more closure there. Maybe we'll get a follow-up event later down the line. Alright, folks. I feel like we're pretty much done here. But I need to reset our hotbars before we head back out. So I think this is as good a breakpoint as any. We'll hit the pause button for now. We'll get that taken care of. Then pop back over to Dresden to uh, take care of round two of our bookkeeping. And we will pick up here next time as we catch up with Aru, get some rest, and plot out whatever comes next. See you then. Remember, although I do love playing Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official websites. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe check out the Patreon, the YouTube memberships, or the Nexus GG page. Links are in the description.